Welcome to Season 1, Episode 3, Longfellow's Wayside Inn, and the destination is in Sudbury, Massachusetts. I am Michael Pappas, leader of Investigating. I always wanted to go to some special scary ghost places so I could be spooked out. With only me and my specialized ghost investigator friend named Alex Hill that is in charge of developing technology so we can see it in the dark. And with my brave best friend like a brother named Brady Mancumber that will be with me for nights at the haunted places. From dusk till the rise of the sun. Battling ghosts, extreme, and the horror. These are the places that we will be investigating. Okay, welcome back, and here is the next place that we will be investigating. What is it? A place that I've been wanting to go to for a while now. The Longfell's Wayside Inn. No way! With the female attractive ghost, Jerusha. Oh, cool. Well, let us get our gear and head off. The three drives to Sudbury, Massachusetts now. Oh, look at this place, guys. Feels like we're in the 17th century. Oh, there it is. There's the, uh, the Longfellow's Wife side in. This is it. And I did say it again. I think I did. We are not in 2018 again. We are like in the 17th century with British soldiers walk around. Yes, sir. Well, Brady, I said that. Yeah, I knew that. This is Ghost Avengers, a lovely Valentine's Day episode. But we are in March, and we are going to communicate with the lovely ghost and people that experience the feelings of Drusha as the ghost. Okay, cameras are always rolling. Great. Let's go inside and meet some people that know some information of Drusha and the sin itself. Okay. Ah, uh, look at this inside. Wow. I just opened the doors, and now you are inside this lovely inn. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, sir? Hi. I am Michael, and these are my friends Brady and Alex. We are here to explore the Longfellow's Wayside Inn, and want to know if you had any experiments in here. Well, I did. There was an attractive female ghost named Drusha that lives upstairs in room 9. Hey, since you had said that, can you bring us to room 9? Of course. Okay. Nice. Now, at this moment, all four goes upstairs into room 9. Ah, here we are. The door to room 9. Yep. So I open the door now. Whoa, man. Look at this room. In here. Whoops. In here. I stayed in here for a night to explore room 9, Drusha's bedroom. So at midnight, I felt the covers ripping off of me. And at 2 a.m., I went back to sleep but heard the sink running with water. When it was actually shut off. Wow. Glue. Glue. Well, that being said, that sounds good enough to know her, huh? No, there's more. <gasps> In her sewing room. Next door. Which is actually uh, their neighbors, but um, this next room is her door. Of room 10. Oh. So now walk with me to room 10. Okay then. And here. I heard snipping noises. That was Jerusha. Sewing around 3am. Oh my. So right now. I am speaking. So at this moment. We are going to talk to one of the staff here that runs the place and want to know about the history of this in itself, not the ghost, just the uh, Longfell's Way set in. 
Hi, can you tell us some information about this inn? Yes, please. Okay, then. I'm going to tell you now. In the pa pastoral countryside of Sudbury, Massachusetts, site, a charming relic of the colonial past, having begun life as a modest two-room family residence in 1707 and officially becoming working in by 1716. Longfellow's Wayside Inn has survived a flourish in its nearly 300 years of hosting guests and travelers. Originally known as Ho's Tavern, this quenched inn was made famous when Henry Waysworth Longfellow employed it as the setting of his book of poetry, Tales of a Wayside Inn in 1863. <laughs> Had it known best for Longfellow, the old inn might never have come to the t attention of Henry Ford, the billionaire fund founder of Ford Motor Company and admirer Longfellow, who purchased the property in 1923. This is... This is actually the, the dining room. Right there. Right there. Wait, where is it? Right there is where I sat with my friend Brady. Right there. This is not the real play, but that's where I sat right there. For, uh, I think it was breakfast or lunch? Yeah, it was lunch. That's where we sat before we actually did the real investigating Longfellow's Wayside in. So that is where we sat. On a recent visit, however, I came specifically to hear stories of Jerusha. How? The reputed Wayside Inn goes. The inn has been built by the Howe family and was handed down through four generations. Jerusha's Jerusha brother, Lemon, known as the Square, was the last in line of Howe's to run the inn. The Howe's innkeeping... Legacy ended with Lyman, since he never married or produced in here by the time of his death in 1861. Now this is George speaking. Now in here in room 9 and also in room 10 has reported smelling Jerusha's searcherous perfume or feeling her sweep past them. W meaning me on the stairs. There have even been claims of being acquainted or awakened by her touching or seeing her presence at the foot of the bed, which is absolutely true by Ghost Adventures tales. Whether these nightmares occurrences are real or frights con con conjured by the Im Imagination. The room is charming. It would be a thrill and pleasure to stay in for those integrated by history and the legends of the Wayside and Ghost. Room 9. Jerusha's Room. Room 10. Her Sewing Room. And that is where they put all of the the little envelopes in there of what they had witnessed during the night. And that is the well for walking. Now, George, did you write anything in here when you spent the mic here? No, not really. It's just uh, what I just told you about uh, what happened to me. Oh, well, okay, then. Well, thank you so much for telling us these things. But we want to know, for just us gentlemen, how would we get Jerusha to like us? By writing her a poem! Yeah, a love poem! Oh boy! But I don't know how to. Huh? So earlier, we got told by a person named George that we should write love poem to attract Jerusha. Okay. Now, let us ask the staff for some paper and some pencils. Well, in 17th century, they didn't use pencils. They used pen-like feathers with ink. Okay. 
So a half an hour later, the two, meaning Michael and Brady, finish with their poems. Okay, I'm done. Brady, can you read yours first? I guess so. <clears throat> Jerusha, your eyes glow so that your cheeks are full of snow. What? ha <laughs> ha uh, Sorry, but good try. Here's mine. Jerusha, your smile glows like snow that I would like to see you wearing and dressed. Ah, interesting, Mike. Sorry, Brady, but I think mine sounds better. Bro! <gasps> Achoo! Okay! Achoo! Well, Mike and Brady, you both did a good job. So I think now this is going to sound fair. Is that the winner? I think you, Mike, you will be staring in room nine. In Drusha's bedroom, and Brady, you will be spending the night in Drusha's sewing room, which is room 10. Is that what we agreed on? Yeah, I guess so. Brady, do you agree? <gasps> Bro! Okay, then. Well, in that case, I had an idea before we get locked inside. What is it? Well, I wanted to go upstairs and read all the letters that are in the cracks in room 9. Like how Zach did it in the uh, Valentine's Day episode. Oh, okay. So now we take you to room 9, all three reading the uh, letter notes in the crevices, and we take them all out and read them. So all three reads the letters. Wow. 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 Very interesting. <clears throat> well, Jerusha, we read all the letters, and I think I will have a great night with you. Sun is setting, and the manager will lock us inside the end. Ready? Ready. Okay, let us out at sunrise. Okay, bye and good luck. Okay. Okay, guys, let us start. Now, we are in pitch black right now, and we are seeing pitch black but for eyesight, is only seeing through the LED screen. Yep. Now let us explore a little in here. Then Alex, you will send us to rooms 9 and room 10 to see who likes us better. Drusha. Well, both of us will send each other to the room. How's that? Okay. Ugh. So Alex, I have a walkie-talkie so you can see on the two screens that are set up as a nerve center that earlier we had set up as filming the whole place and where we are going to be with these cameras everywhere so you can see us. Okay. So go to the audio slash nervous room and keep an eye out. Okay then. Wait, is that outside? Yeah, it is outside, so can you go in while we get busy? Okay then. Twelve thirty AM in Longfellow's Wayside Inn in Sudbury, Massachusetts. Alex is watching me, including Brady, from this nerve center that is actually outside the inn. He, Alex, is watching us in both room nine and ten. Yep. So, Drusha, if you are in here, I am single. I made a poem for you earlier. And I want to come from you. Don't be shy. Digital recorder rolling. Drusha, who do you prefer? Me or my best friend, pal, like Brady? Just then, Michael got a response on his digital recorder. Here is the camera's audio. Wow, they look strong. Wow, they look strong. Wow, they look strong. What was that noise? Shh, I know. I heard footsteps. Oh, dude, look at my arm here. It is sticking up and I'm getting the goosebumps. That's the sound of her. Wow, already, man, huh? 
<clears throat> Anyways. Drusha, can you sing for us? Whoa! What? Oh my god. I just saw a floating white dress on top of those stairs, man. What? I didn't see it. You did? Everything is okay. <clears throat> Alex, did you see a white dress floating on top of these stairs up there? No, wait, you did? Yes. Wow. Okay, I will keep on watching. You really saw that? Yes. It was right on top of these stairs. And it was floating. And it was white. Holy crap. Hey, Jerusha, was that you? We are ready to split to rooms 9 and 10. Alex? Hello. Me and Brady are now going into our rooms. So look out for anything. Okay. Ready to split into our rooms? I am ready. Good luck, bro. Hope she does something exciting to you. Same to you. Okay. So here I am. In room 9. Jerusha's bedroom. When also... Guess some people experience stuff in here. I also brought a digital recorder to let her speak into it. Here I am and that's supposed to be room 10. R room 10, Jerusha's sewing room. When also, people sometimes come in here and experience things that Jerusha had did. That these people had came here for to visit Jerusha. That made no sense. Drusha, can you tell me your favorite color? Purple. Did she say purple? Okay. Well, can you try to touch me so I know that you're here? Wow. Wow. I felt these hands that went down on my knees. Are you in here, sweetie? Are you touching me right now? When Drusha is with Mike, Brady, on the other hand, has a shocking way to get Drusha. <clears throat> hey, Drusha. I'll sing you that attractive poem that I promised. You love strawberries that are polished and red. Your favorite flower is violets that are blue. Why don't you come over to me? Nothing happens except Michael is strongly doing his best to communicate with Drusha. And some more activity happening. <laughs> Drusha, do you want to be in this room with me? Later, at 2 a.m., Brady starts complaining. Oh, come on, Drusha. There's a man that is laying in his bed all alone. I've offered to touch you, I offer, I offer you to kiss me. Plus a bar of chocolates. On Brady's recorder, what he just said about Drusha. His complaining tells us that this might be the voice of Drusha. This is what he had for a response. I will try to be with you. I'll try to be with you. I'll try to be with you. Yeah, and by the way, Drusha. Plus a bar of chocolates. <gasps> Whoa, I felt like these nails on the back of my spine. That just st start shocking down me. <gasps> oh my god, what the hell was that? <sighs> Almost at the end of this wrap-up investigation at the Longfellow's Wayside Inn, when suddenly Brady was complaining about Drusha, when he got this EVP of a Drusha saying, I will try to be there with you, until he experienced... Experienced something in her sewing room. <gasps> oh my god. What the hell was that? Oh, dude, I got body chills going on my spines. Oh, this doesn't really feel right. I need to get out of here. Mike! Mike! Whoa, what? What? I felt nails on my back spine, man. And it's like weird, man. It felt like weird spiders. Whoa. Yes. How is she to you? Pretty friendly and aggressive. Wow, good. And at this time, Mike and Brady agrees to let Alex inside so he can understand what happened to Mike and Brady in both rooms. So now they 
start talking about it. <clears throat> Good to hear that from the TV channel, from watching you guys, what happened? Oh yeah, Alex, it was cool. Dude, she did speak to me, but it felt like I was teased. Me too. The three talks around 5am about the end and Drew says some more. There was more to it, but she was like a fish that is on your hook. That, let's go. That is an exciting moment. Until the fish lets go, like Darusha says, Air, you want my lure? No, you can't have it. You know, it's a little tease from what she did to us. That is true, I agree. When the two keep on talking, the sun rises and ends their third investigating place.